Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wal aqibatu lil muttaqin wa la udwana illa ala al-dhalimeen. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Ashadu anna nabiyana muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'du ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bil jami'a. Welcome all you brothers in Islam to our new class, the 26th lesson of Al Arabiya to Ben Yadik, Book 1, Part 1 of the new version. And we stopped at page 4, Al Safha to Al Rabiya to. And we stopped exactly at Aid. <coughs> And repeat في أعلى الصفحة at the top of the page. Uh, as you can see, my brothers in Islam on the screen, أعيد comes from the verb أعاد. What is the root form? What's the he form past tense? أعاد الكلام. He repeated the speech. He repeated the talk. You can put a name between the two words. You can say أعاد خالد الكلام. Khalidun is the subject and Al-Kalama is the object. An object gets a fatha as she will know later on, inshallah. So, A'ada fi'lun madin is a past tense verb. Uh, I have put as well the I form in the past tense. I've put as well the I form in the past tense to uh, just to emphasize that because the I form is a bit different. It's A'adatu. Added to, I repeat it. Uh, so, أعاد uh, يعيد he repeats فعل مضارع أعيد is the command the one we have right? like I said سكون is command. إعادة repetition. Uh, I think I'm just double checking the English. bit in doubt about the meaning of this mustar, the main now. Now, repetition. And aada uh, is also uh, an, uh, it has also another meaning. I'm just checking now. Is to return something back or to give something back. It's very important. Ah, uh, so aadat uh, to, for example, a sentence here. Aadat to al I gave back the money. Ila Khalidin. Uh, uh, gave back. So there are two meanings here. Returned. So you learn it too. Uh, like you say, uh, you have hit uh, two birds with one stone. So you have two important meanings. So, to repeat and also to return something back. So, i'adatan is a returning back, the, the main meaning, the main noun, returning back, or repetition. Fahuwa mu'idun, so he's the repeater. Wal maf'ulu mu'adun, repeated. Ad-darsu mu'adun, the lesson is repeated. So after knowing these mushtaqat, uh, these these derivements, and inshallah I will try never, uh, I, I will try not to repeat them again. Uh, so after that, my brothers in Islam, we're going to the hiwar itself, al hiwar al-thani, the second conversation, and it starts with Muhammadun, Muhammadun. And Muhammadun is the name of our beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
and the meaning wa ma'na muhammadin and the meaning of muhammad is the praised the one who is praised and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is praised by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praised also by the people uh, after that we going to the word sharifun so muhammadun says assalamu alaykum peace be upon you you can always repeat when I say the Arabic sentence for those who have difficulty in reading or pronouncing. Assalamu alaikum. Sharifun. Sharifun, my brothers in Islam, is ismu alamin mudakkarin arabiyin. Ismu alamin. Ismu alamin mudakkarin. It's a masculine proper noun. It's mu'alamin mudakkarin. Arabiyun. So it's an Arabic proper noun. A masculine Arabic proper noun. Uh, Sharifun, my brothers in Islam, has two plural forms. Lahu <coughs> jam'ani. Sharifun lahu, lahu <coughs> jam'ani. It has two plural forms. Shurafa'u. What is mamnu'un min as what is uh, uh, forbidden to have new nation? There's only one Dhamma. It's called Mamnu' Amin al Sarf. And the Sad, as you can see, is indicating that. Wa Ashrafun. Ashrafun. So, uh, both are famous. Both plurals are widely used and famous. Uh, for feminine, Sharifatun with the Ta' Marbota. As you can see, Sharifatun. Well, Jamu, the plural is Sharifatun. Now, the meaning of Sharifun, my brothers in Islam, is noble. So, Sharifun is noble. Huwa Rajulun Sharifun. He's a noble man. Wahiya Mara'atun Sharifatun. And she is a noble woman. And, uh, the issue now, my brothers in Islam, is that there are people, uh, Arabic people, who uh, are being called Sharif. So, for example, uh, I had a classmate whose name was Ahmed. So, this is a first name, Ahmed Sharif. Okay. So, Sharifun, my brothers in Islam, uh, it indicates sometimes something. In the Arabic countries, uh, whether... Uh, in North Africa, whether in the Middle East, you will find that uh, it's not only a name you give to a person. You say, uh, the, maybe there are people whose name is Sharif, uh, whose mothers have uh, chosen or her, their fathers have chosen this word for them. But Sharif, on, there is something behind it in, 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 in occasions, in situations. I'm trying now, inshallah, to explain you that in this following sentence. وقد يكون من اسم عائلته شريف أنه من أهل البيت. So, وقد قد means perhaps maybe. There is there is a chance. وقد يكون it might be that whose family name اسم عائلته his family name is شريف like I told you. Annahu uh, that he's from Ahl al Bayt, from the family of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That he he's a descendant from the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, uh, likewise, for example, if you say Morocco, he's Sharif, then the people know he's from the family of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وعند التفصيل وعند التفصيل and when going into detail تفصيل means detail يستخدم في البلاد العربية in the Arabic country the name شريف is used يستخدم is used لدرية الحسن رضي الله عنه is used for the descendants of الحسن Radiallahu anhu, the grandson of the Messenger. So Sharifun 
Sharifun is used in the Arabic countries for somebody who's a descendant of who? Of the great companion Al Hassan ibn Ali, the son of Ali, radiallahu uh, anhu. So Al Hassan, if you're a descendant of Al Hassan, then the people might call you Sharif. Wasayyidun, as for the uh, nickname Sayyidun, Lidurriyati Al Hussein, radiallahu anhuma. As for Sayyidun, uh, this uh, nickname is uh, laqab, this nickname is used for the descendants of Al Hussein, who is another grandson of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, although sometimes they just cross each other. Okay? Uh, you might be one of the descendants, one of the offspring of Al Hussein radiallahu anhu, and they still call you Sharif because they see the Sharif as a general uh, laqab, a general nickname for uh, a descendant of the Prophet, sallam, whether you're from Al Hassan or Al Hussein. Anyway, but I just gave you the detail and the difference between Sharifun, what means literally noble, and Sayyidun, what means literally master. Anyway, this is, uh, like I said, what uh, uh, is being used in the Arabic countries for the descendants of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now we have Muhammadun. We're going not to repeat the names more than once. So Muhammadun and Sharifun, we have done those names. So we start straight away with the third line. Min Aina Anta. You always repeat for those, especially those who are weak. Min Aina Anta. Min Aina Anta. We have three words there. Min from Aina where Anta you from where you. So you have to put the R yourself. Like I said, you put the S yourself. The English is you put the uh, English R yourself. Literally three words. Min from Aina where you from where you. So you say from where are you? And the Anta's you for masculine. And Anti is for feminine. هناك فرق هناك دار هناك فرق there is a difference في in المعنى in the meaning بين between men women between men and men different uh, definitely there are some differences because men means from and men means who men means from and men means who and as you know, if the harakats are not there, you will not see the difference unless you uh, have studied Arabic or you know Arabic well from father to son. Uh, then you know straight away that uh, in this context it's men and it cannot be men. Because it's just like English. You don't say, who were you? Who were you? You don't say that. You say, from where are you? So men means from and men means who. And uh, min harfu jarrin. Min harfu jarrin. What is a preposition? Harfu is a letter. Uh, so harfu jarrin is a preposition letter. Wa man, man is not a letter, although it looks like a letter. It looks like two letters. But man is ismus tifhamin. It's a noun of questioning. Okay? It's a noun of questioning. Ismu. And istifamin means questioning. So it's a questioning tool. You use men to ask. Okay. Uh, men enter. Who are you? So you get a question mark. So uh, men is totally different than men. And men is uh, very powerful because it's a preposition. Because after men you get what? You get the kasra. Okay. But some words, they are fixed. Uh, they call them mabniyun, like aina. Aina cannot be changed. You cannot say aini because of min. They're just fixed. And that's something you will learn later on, inshallah. وَيُسْتَخْدَمُوا مَعَ الْمُذَكَّرِ وَالْمُؤَنَّثِ وَالْمُفْرَدِ وَالْجَمْعِ And it's used with the masculine, وَالْمُؤَنَّثِ in the feminine, وَالْمُفْرَدِ in the single form, وَالْجَمْعِ in the plural form. So, min is used with all the forms. 
Likewise, men is also used with all the forms. Aina. Aina means where. Wa yustakhdamu, and it's used ma'al mudakkari, with the masculine form. Wa al muannathi, you can put shed on the noon, and the feminine form. Wa al mufradi, and the single form. Wa al jam'i, and the plural form. So you say, Aina Muhammadun. You see, I use it with the masculine name. Aina Khadijatu. Aina Tullabu. Where are the students? Aina Talibatu. Where are the female plural students? So male plural students are Tullabun. And female students plural is Talibatun. And the single form is for male Talibun and for female Talibatun. And this is something you will learn later on, inshallah, very soon. In this chapter, inshallah. So this extra information, but not for long. It's extra information, but not for long. Because you will get these words, inshallah, in the first chapter. Min aina anta? Anta is you, masculine, as you know. Ana, ana can be translated in two, in, uh, it has two meanings. It can be either I or me. Okay, ana has two meanings. Some people, they think that Anna can only be I, but it can also be me. So, for example, Man fa'ala hada, who did this? You say Anna, me, or I. And Anna is for masculine and feminine, as you know, and it's the I form. It's I pronoun. Damirun. Pronoun. Ana min Pakistan. Ana min Pakistan. I am from Pakistan. So you have to add the M. Idafatu. Adding. Idafatu means adding. It's normally Idafatun. Idafatu M fi tarjamati. The adding of uh, M in the translation. Tarjamatun means translation. So you have to add sometimes words like M, R, S. Um, so Anna, I am. We add the M. Min means from. And Pakistan is Pakistan. Al Aslu, the root form of this country. This Muslim country is Pakistanu, with one Dhamma. So when you learn the, the name of the country, it's Pakistanu. And here in the text, or when you're going to hear the audio, you might hear Pakistana. That is correct in that context, because Min, although Min gives a Kasra to the nouns after it, because it's a preposition, when the noun has only one Dhamma, when the noun is mamnu'un min as sarf has only one dhamma, like Pakistanu. When you get a preposition, you always get one fatha instead of the kasra. So this is a rule you will learn later on, inshallah. So Pakistanu is the country name. Lakinnahu ismun majrurun huna. Lakinnahu ismun majrurun huna. But here, it's a noun that's affected by the preposition here. Tanbihun. A note. ليس في اللغة العربية حرف P. In the Arabic language, ليس, there, is, there is not in the Arabic language the letter P. So you don't say Pakistan. أنا من Pakistan. You don't say that. You, you change the P to a B. Pakistan. Okay? We don't have the P in the Arabic language. And likewise, in the English language, there are multiple letters of the Arabic language that cannot be found in the English language or in the English alphabet. So, uh, Muhammadun says, Hal anta Pakistaniyun? Now, I have to mention something here. You see the Hal, Hal and the Hamza. You see the hal and the hamza. Hal, shartun uh, ma'il, this symbol, and then you have a hamza after it. Both are letters, and they are harfa istifhamin. They are two letters of istifham. 
two letters of questioning. So we have done a bit ago, men is ismu stifham, it's a noun of questioning. As for hal, hal is a harfu stifham, and hamza is also harfu stifham. Harfa, I've put the alif there because it's the dual form. There are two letters of questioning. So when you make a question, you normally use hal or a. And there is no third letter to make a question. When I say to make a question, I don't use... I don't mean by using, for example, who or where. Anus uh, also is to is is having. Hell and a uh, is to make a question. For example, Khalid is ill. So when you want to say is Khalid ill, you use hell or a. Uh. Okay. Uh, this is a book. It's not a question. Let me make it a question. Hell had a kitabun. Is this a book or a had a kitabun? Is this a book? So these two letters, my brothers in Islam, are very, very important in the Arabic language. It's a main, main subject in the Arabic language. So, Hal and A are harfa stifhamin, are two letters of questioning, my brothers in Islam. Both letters are written at the beginning of a sentence. And are two ways and are two ways of asking questions in the Arabic language. Both letters mean the same. Like I said, ahada kitabun, is this a book? Or hal hada kitabun, is this a book? So both mean the same. But both of them, they have different meanings depending on the context. So, for example, هل هذا كتاب or هذا كتاب is this a book? So here it means is, okay? But can also mean are. Like in the in this conversation, هل أنت Pakistani? Are you Pakistani? But it can also mean is, like in the sentence, هل خالد مريض? Is Khalid ill? Or a Khalidun fil masjidi? Is Khalid in the masjid? Hal hada kitabun? Is this a book? Also, it can mean do. As in the sentence, Hal tasumu? Do you fast? Hal ladayka kitabun? Do you have a book? Al ladayka kitabun? Do you have a book? As it can also. Uh, As, as it can also mean did, uh, with the past tense verb. As in this example, هل ذهبت, did you go, إلى المسجد, to the masjid? The only real difference between the two letters is that هل is written as a separate word with space between it and the next word. So when using a computer, you need to press the space bar between هل and the word after hell. As for a, the hamza, it has the same ruling of the wow. Aha, we've studied the wow, and there is no space bar pressed between the wow and the word after it, what means and wa. Wow is the name of the letter, but what I actually mean is the letter wa, what means and. So, and it's written directly before the next word with no space between it and the next word. So no space when you use the Hamza. The Hamza to the uh, Hamza to istifham, you can say harfu uh, istifham at the Hamza. وَنَخْتِمُ هَذَا الْمَوْضُوعُ بِقَاعِدَةِ إِسْتِخْدَامِ Aha. This is something, inshallah, I will mention in the next class, inshallah. Until then, inshallah, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته